Granny Macduff ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy and I'll begin. Marie could not believe her eyes. Was it really him? Had Philippe finally returned? He had grown taller. How handsome he was, she thought. When she smiled at him, he thought the same. But there was no time, for he had come on a mission and every second was more precious than gold. Hello, she said. Your Highness, he replied. Philippe bowed. I have been waiting for you. I thought you would never return. I have been training these past years to be the knight my father was. And? I can only hope to live up to him. I am sure you will make him proud, Philippe. He smiled. How lovely it was to hear her say his name. But it is not good news I bring. I must speak with you and I must see the king. Then let us go see him. Philippe followed Marie to the palace. They walked along the long corridors leading to the great hall. When they arrived, Marie said, Father, We must speak with you. It is important. The king studied Philippe for a moment. He looks so familiar, he thought. Philippe knew exactly what the king was thinking. For it was true. He looked just like his father. I am Philippe, son of Jacques Sorel, knight of the realm and your most loyal servant. So it is you. I am glad you have returned. Jacques was one of the finest men I have ever known, and a knight who shall never be matched. He was. It would be best if we could speak in private, Your Highness. Come. They followed the king into his private chambers. Let us sit and eat, and you can tell me what it is that is so important. Yes, Your Majesty. On the table was a feast fit, well, for a king. Philippe was starving and so he ate a bit and then began. When we were small, Marie and I, we vanquished a sorcerer, Francois the Terrible. The king could not believe his ears. Ballantrow? Yes, Your Highness. I had stolen his wand, you see. It is the wand which holds almost all his power. When I met Marie, we worked together to cast a spell, turn him to dust and trap him inside a box. I left this place and everything I held dear to take the box to the ends of the earth so that Ballantrow would never hurt another. But he has returned, said Marie. How? A goblin. I believe he was able to cast a spell to find the box, but I cannot be certain. He did find it, and he did free Ballantrow. Of this, I am sure. How do you know? I was eating supper at an inn, and in they walked. Ballantrow and his goblin, right before my very eyes. I took cover, they did not see me, and when the goblin went to fetch their horses, I captured him. I have brought him here. Let us speak with him. Philippe opened his satchel and pulled out a golden ball about the size of a tangerine. He placed it on the floor and clicked the lock on the side. The ball opened and the goblin climbed out. 
cramped in there, I say. He stretched and yawned and opened his eyes. You, he cried at the sight of Philippe. Take another step and I'll put you right back in. The goblin stopped. pip back, pip back. Tell us your name, goblin, Marie commanded. Such a pretty princess you are, and smart as a whip too, I hear. pip back, pip back. Patrick, at your service. The goblin bowed. But pip back for short. They call me Marie. pip back, I know that. Tell us how you found the box, and why you let Ballantrow out. pip back, pip back. not me. On accident, you see. I was travelling along, and I saw something shiny there in the dirt. I dug it up, pip back, pip back. What a mighty fine box, I said. So I opened it, and out popped the saucer. Mighty scary he was. He told me if I didn't follow him and do his bidding, he'd put me in that box he would. Pip pat, pip pat. I listened. Goblins are tricksters by nature. We cannot trust him, said the king. Pip pat, pip pat. No, Majesty, you'll see no trick from me. I'm an honest goblin, I am, and I can prove it. I'll not only tell you how to defeat Ballantrow, but I'll also show you the way I will. A big, scary plan he's got. Pip pat, pip pat. Tell us, please, asked Marie. He's looking for the spell of all spells, hidden deep within the caves of Castonia. It is said that this spell will give supreme power to whoever recites it. It can't be, said the king. The spell does not exist. It is but a story they tell children before bed, said Philippe. No, you are wrong. It is real. It was your father who hid it. That is why Ballantra was after him. Philippe and Marie could not believe it. And why he was here that day when we were children, wasn't it? He was looking for his wand, perhaps. But he was here searching for something else. I did not know. How did I not see it? said Philippe. We were children. Do not blame yourself. When he came, was it here? Philippe asked. No, we had already moved it. The spell had been kept secret here in the palace for centuries. Your father sacrificed everything to keep it safe, to keep us all safe. We owe him a great debt, the king replied. We have not another moment to waste. Can you show us the way, Pitpat? said Philippe. I can, and I will. But I require a horse, the biggest in your stable, please. I am coming with you. It is far too treacherous to have you put in danger. I would never forgive myself, said Philippe. She is as strong as you, in heart and spirit, and one of the finest swordsmen I have ever seen. She will go with you, and you will treat her as you treat any other knight. You taught me well, father. Marie embraced the king, and with that they were off. Into the mountains they went, up the steep rocky slopes, and down into the grassy valleys. Pit back, pit back, we go to the trap. We find the spell we never will tell. Pit back rhymed as they made their way through the valley. Do you have a sword, Pit Pat? Marie asked. Pit Pat, Pit Pat. Nope, nope. I need no sword, Princess. I am a goblin. I am faster than the eye can catch me, and I can heal a pinprick or a gash. It matters not. I can heal it. Well then, let's hope we only make use of your speed. Pit Pat, Pit Pat. I'll pop up right behind your back. By the time you turn, I shall be gone and back around with but a yawn. <laughs> How funny you are. I think we should be friends, said Marie. I hope so, Princess. I quite like having such a nice horse. And these shoes the cobbler made me. I shall be quicker on my feet than ever I shall. We'll stop here for the night. It is too dark in that part of the woods and we'll need light to climb that mountain tomorrow. Before they had dismounted, 
Pitpat had gathered a large pile of twigs and lit a fire. Fetch dinner, shall I? Pitpat did, and they all ate until their bellies were full and talked until they fell asleep. The next day would be a great adventure, one they had never imagined. But that is a story for next week. The end. Hello children. Don't forget you can listen to all my stories on YouTube at Granny McDuff. And now it's time to take a deep breath, close our eyes, so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs> <laughs>